Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Minion Masters, a free to play strategy card game from Beta Dwarf. It's currently in early access and by that I mean very early access really. I only learned about this one through my humble monthly bundle subscription to which they were giving out a free premium pack. The premium pack basically gives you double XP for life and a bunch of in-game currency. So let's start with the options. Visuals are pretty self-explanatory. Advanced settings gives you a few more options you can mess about with. There are a lot of things you can outright disable to make this game run better on older machines. Sound settings are pretty simple. A word of warning, the music one for me at least seemed to be loud as hell no matter where I placed the slider. I had to turn everything down via Windows sound panel instead to get around this issue. Okay, so we move on to the main hub. At the top of the screen is the current deck you are using and clicking that will bring up the deck management. You'll see at the top of the screen your current deck sits. Replacing cards is as simple as clicking and dragging and below that is the collection of cards you currently own. Down the right side of the screen are different decks you can build which unlock as you level up. You start with one deck and that will stay that way until level 20. Below the collection you will see the crafting button. This shows pretty much every card in the game and from here you can use your currency to make new cards. You can also salvage unused cards, also typically if you have more than three of a certain card, say I have three lightning strikes and I find a fourth, the fourth card will be salvaged automatically. Salvaging gives you shards, which in turn you can use to make more cards. Simple enough really. In the centre of the hub you have the master and arena selection. Right now there are eight masters in the game. Each of them has different abilities and effects which happen in game as you gather EXP. More on that shortly. Typically, you start with one master. And there are two others on free rotation, which appears to change every week. Some masters look a bit like they somehow fell in from another game. I will let you decide where you think this marine type master came from. The arenas you typically have to purchase with in-game currency and there's a few to pick from. The winter holiday one you simply can get from subscribing to their free newsletter. However, I did this and it's still locked. No idea what went wrong there. You can either use gems to buy these new arenas or grind them out with shards. They don't really change anything gameplay wise apart from the aesthetics. Some of them look more interesting than others. To the bottom left of your hub, you will find your current arena rank, which is tied in with PvP. And this game is all about PvP. Wood League is where you begin at rank 5, and you will move up the ranks the more wins you accumulate. To the bottom of the screen, you have two buttons. The left one is solo play, where you can battle against AI to get some pretty nice rewards. The right button is the PvP button, which you will likely be using the most. Solo play has normal, hard and expert missions. Fishing all the missions in a category will give you a loot chest with some nifty rewards in. Now, near the top left of the hub, we have the Power Tower. This is where you earn new cards and can get free gems every day. You get a free spin every day. After 4 spins you get a guaranteed rare or better reward. Simply click the token and it brings up a wheel. The wheel spins automatically, wherever it lands, that's the reward. So today I get some free shards, only 10 of them as well, which I guess is better than nothing. There are two forms of these tokens, they are the free kind and then you get power tokens. These you buy with different forms of currency in game. Speaking of which, let's check out the shop, which if I remember correctly unlocks a few levels into the game. As you can see, you can buy power tokens with coins or gems. Coins you simply acquire by playing through the game. It's as simple as that. 
gems are slightly different and varied by how you can find them. You can find them by simply playing and leveling up or by the method I guess most people use instead and how this game is primarily funded. Clicking gems at the top of the screen will show you where you can exchange your cash for the in-game currency. Overall I think these prices are not too bad uh, like you would see in some of the other games of this type unfortunately. I don't think I'd personally use it but I can see how players might be drawn to this to unlock new masters or to get power tokens for new loot or even new arenas. It is worth noting that everything can be unlocked through the use of shards. It would take you a long time to do so but it's obtainable for those who really do prefer the free to play route. Okay, so at the very bottom of the hub on the left you will find the chat window. Down here you will have a couple of buttons, one to hide the chat completely, the other to block users. Click the chat box to bring up messages sent while you have been in game. The news feed on the right can be hidden with a simple click of a button and the same again to bring it back. And towards the bottom right of the hub you will have your currency which you currently own gems, chart and gold respectively uh, you then have the leaderboard button the friends list and settings settings does exactly what the escape key does leaderboards will show you the top 20 players in the game currently you can see the decks they currently use however hovering over any of the cards doesn't show any info which is a bit unfortunate. The friends list is pretty self explanatory. Next to each of your Steam buddies is a battle button and a chat button, so you can join your friends if you wish to. Now to the bottom right, which is the profile area. Uh, daily challenges you can unlock at level 10. You can earn some nice rewards for doing this. You typically get one a day and it stacks up to three. It's a great way to get gold very quickly. Here it displays your current EXP and level, the PVP tier you are in, and below your level you can see all the unlocks coming your way as you do progress. Special challenges and events I have yet to see, uh, but it's nice to see that they have something planned for it. I guess it will be another way to earn in-game rewards. And finally we have the replay button. This is where you can see past games you have played and there's nothing much more to say about that one. So let's hop into a solo game and see what the game is really about. Straight away you will get issued four cards which you can either use keys for or click them with the mouse. Q, W, E and R are the default keys and are easily accessible. The goal of the game is very simple destroy the enemy's tower before they destroy yours. To do this you will play minions or spell cards. You will notice two bridges, one at the top and one at the bottom. Controlling both these bridges is pretty much key to victory as for each bridge you control you generate experience points which level up your master. Cards all have a mana cost as you can see on the top right of each card. Generally, the more mana something costs, the more powerful it is. You can hoard up to 10 mana at any time. After that, it just becomes a waste. So keep playing cards to not cap it. If minions do get too close to your master, the master will attempt to kill them. So even if you have no minions on the board, it's not too bad, as the master will deal with weaker ones pretty easily. Certain cards are better at countering than others. You will learn this as you play the game through. Hopefully you will teach yourself how to counter things which is essential for when you want to start PvP. So to the nitty gritty of Minion Masters. It's free to play so there's no real reason not to give this a go. And if you are familiar with Clash Royale uh, this game will be very very easy to pick up. The graphics are pretty nice, things look pretty good overall. The effects are quite delightful and seeing blood spray all over the place when you blast enemies with spells is quite entertaining. The soundtrack is pretty basic. It fits the game nicely 
but it is pretty unnoticeable. If you turn the music off, you won't feel like you're missing much, really. Overall, the game does have great sound effects, though. While this game is currently in very, as I said, very early access, it feels pretty well polished already. It does make me wonder what else they plan to add to this game to expand on something that can already become quite competitive. Uh, PvP feels very smooth and lag free. Uh, sometimes getting into a game can take way longer than the estimate, but most of the time, I would say maybe 90% of the time, you do get into a game pretty much instantly. So, instead of asking, is this game worth the price tag, how about, is this game worth your time? Right now, it certainly is if you like quick paced PvP strategy games. Clash Royale was and still is hugely successful on mobile devices, so having a PC game doing the exact same thing is certainly not a bad thing. This is not a straight up clone of that game either. This game already has its own identity and so far I'm very impressed with it. Uh, that may have something to do with me never losing a single PvP match on this yet. Uh, maybe. Yeah, no, seriously, this game is easy to pick up and play and is just straight up fun. Let's hope Beta Dwarf keep this game on the great path it's on. If they do, they have a real gem of a game here. Uh, let's hope it continues to progress and not hit too many pay to win snags. I will be keeping a very close eye on this one as time goes on. Just give it a go, it's free. If you don't like it, then all you would have really lost is time. And really within the first hour or two, I would think you will know if you're going to enjoy this game or not in the long run. Sound off in the comments below with your thoughts on this game. Uh, like, share and subscribe if you found this video useful. Uh, thumbs down is there too if you are a sadist, I suppose. I've been Wolf, you have been great, and I'll see you again soon.